Sam Wu doesn't believe in being kind to the people who are careless, and decides to cut his group member's name from a presentation. His cruel act causes his senior to repeat his academic year. But the problem starts to arise when he keeps crossing paths with the senior, who is determined to make his life a living hell. Even after having a peaceful start to the day, Sam Wu is still skeptical and carefully examines his surroundings for any signs of Jae Young, the biggest nuisance in his life. The peak enemies to lovers where they keep looking for each other, even if they hate each other. As soon as he spots the bright red outfit in the crowd, he rushes in the opposite direction, telling Ji Hei to fall in quickly. Song Wu figures that Jae Young is just coming out after attending a lecture, since he is mixed with such a huge crowd. He suddenly remembers that Jae Young couldn't harass him today because he has to retake the moral education class, meaning he can rest on Wednesday. Satisfied with his discovery, Song Wu decides to sit at a full table during lunch, hoping that Jae Young will not be able to join him there. His plan works perfectly when Jae Young walks into the cafe and seems disappointed to see that he can't sit beside Song Wu. Seeing his reaction, Song Wu smirks, mocking Jae Young in his imagination about how he can't bother him now. Song Wu looks very innocent, but I am sure that he is not that clueless. His happiness is not hidden from Ji Hei, who points out how he seems to be in a good mood. After Song Wu agrees to her, Ji Hei further asks him if he is going home after eating. Song Wu replies to her that he is going to the library. After hearing his plans, Ji Hei says that they should go to the convenience store first and offers to buy him a drink. Song Wu's mood dampens a little to hear that, as he says she can't buy him a drink. Surprised by his statement, Ji Hei asks him why she can't do that. Song Wu is confused about what he should tell her, but then decides to explain his situation and tells her that he's being harassed right now. He forgot to mention that his bully is Prince Charming. Ji Hei is worried to hear that, as she imagines different ways Song Wu might be being harassed and says that is a serious situation. She says to him that she doesn't know the culprit behind this, but there is a counseling center, a police station, or plenty of other people who can help him in this situation. Song Wu ignores her suggestion and instead tells her that the person has bought all the coffee he drinks, so there is nothing she can treat him with at the convenience store. Ji He is surprised to hear the story, which resembles an old tale of a man doing a similar thing to make himself rich. She then suggests that Song Wu can buy his favorite drink from the online store, and it will be delivered to him one day. Song Wu is surprised at the suggestion, as he didn't even consider that, and compliments Ji Hei on how smart she is. Ji Hei asks him to share other ways he is being harassed right now. Song Wu replies that it may seem strange to her, but he can only concentrate on the lecture if he sits in a specific seat. Ji Hei quickly says that she saw the same character in a TV show, and says that it might be obsessive-compulsive disorder. Song Wu dismisses her statement, saying that the doctor said that his condition doesn't qualify as a disorder. Returning to the topic, he continues that the person sits in the seat before him and he can't sit there anymore. He tells her that it is hard for him to concentrate when he is sitting further away from that seat, but he also can't bear to sit beside that person. Ji Hei suggests that he can use a divider if he is forced to sit beside that person. Song Wu is happy to hear a possible solution and quickly tells her how that person keeps shaking his legs and making noise while sitting next to him in the library. Like a guardian angel, Ji Hei again gives a possible solution as she tells him to use earplugs in the library. Song Wu smiles at her as he thanks her and says that he will buy her a drink next time. He suddenly decides that he needs to go shopping at the dollar store instead of going to the library. Ji Hei, who was telling him how she was looking forward to having a drink with him, is surprised when he suddenly stands up from the table. She complains that she hasn't finished eating yet, but Song Wu just ignores her. They still end up walking together, and Ji Hei casually asks Song Wu if his childhood name was Song Chu. He is surprised at how Ji Hei guessed his name correctly, while she is just happy that her guess was correct. She excitedly asks Song Wu if she can use his nickname, but he just thinks to himself how she is already calling him Opa, even though they are not siblings. Before he can reply to her, he notices Jae Young coming there and quickly turns around. Ji Hei is confused by his behavior, but Yi just says that he needs to go that way, and she politely bids him goodbye. Song Wu is not happy to see Jae Young, as his day was going well up until now, even if he didn't drink his coffee. But as soon as he saw that red jacket, his mood turned awful. He suddenly feels goosebumps on his back and turns around, only to find Jae Young approaching him. Determined to not get caught, he starts running while thinking about how Jae Young has ruined the firm and perfect system he had maintained up until now. I can't help but feel pity for Song Wu. He must feel like he is losing control over his life after his routine is disturbed. This makes his hatred for the other stronger, and he just wants him to disappear. Thinking that he must have outrun Jae Young by now, 
He stops to catch his breath, but is utterly disappointed. When Jae Young stops right behind him, complaining about how he ran so fast, he starts dragging his feet again, ignoring Jae Young, who suggests that they should stop for a moment and comments that this is not a sports day, where the others keep running. Love how Jae Young tries to offer a truce, even though he is the one chasing the other. San Woo doesn't go far as he sits on a nearby bench, breathing heavily after running that fast. Huffing loudly, Jae Young also follows him and says that Song Woo must be crazy to run like that. Ignoring his other comments, Song Woo asks him why he followed him. Jae Young slumps beside him and replies that it was weird when Song Woo ran away like that, so he chased after him without thinking. He takes a moment to catch his breath as Song Woo, what's calmed down by this point, comments on how Jae Young is chasing him like this, which is more weird. Jae Young continues to follow Song Woo and tells him that his girlfriend is pretty. Song Woo replies that he doesn't have a girlfriend. Jae Young asks him the name of the girl he had lunch with, to which Song Woo replies that her name is Kim Ji Hae. Jae Young inquires about her major, and when Song Woo says that it is philosophy, he replies that Ryu Ji Hae is a French literature major. Shocked at how Jae Young knows a lot about her, Song Woo almost shouts as he asks Jae Young if he ran a background check on Ji Hae and says that she is a good person who has nothing to do with him. Jae Young seems offended at his accusation as he reminds Song Wu that they both came to the place where he works and he saw her school ID, so it is normal to remember her name. Suddenly realizing something, he asks Song Wu if he even remembers his name. Song Wu calmly replies that an efficient brain disposes of worthless information. No matter how much he gets bullied, Song Wu destroys the Prince Charming with just one sentence. Jae Young is annoyed with his answer and says that Song Wu is ruining the mood again. When Song Wu continues to walk without paying him any attention, Jae Young gives him a mission to make an acrostic poem with his name. Song Wu ignores him at first, but he stops when Jae Young says that he will stop bullying him as a reward. Jae Young seems happy to get his attention, as Song Wu asks him if he will succeed after just making a poem, and to what degree the harassment will decrease. Jae Young replies that he will accept it if the poem is even a little bit creative, and he will stop the harassment to the degree Song Wu wants. Even though the creativity of the poem is unclear, Song Wu decides to give it a try to see if it can stop the harassment. He gives his agreement to Jae Young and starts his poem with the syllable J, talking about how the monsoon season has just begun. Continuing with the next J, Song Wu says that Jerk is Jae Young's middle name. My man saw an opportunity to curse Jae Young and didn't waste a minute to take it. He concludes with the last syllable Y and says that Jae Young disappearing from his life would be nice. After he finishes reading the poem, Jae Young starts to evaluate the poem and gives him full marks for accuracy. Song Wu is satisfied when he also gets full marks for emotional honesty, but his happiness doesn't last when Jae Young gives him three marks for literary artistry. He gives Song Wu one mark for the story and then pretends to think about how he should evaluate originality. Jae Young's marking gives an insight into how our assignments get marked. Song Wu is hoping that he will succeed after getting full marks in this category, but his hopes are crushed when Jae Young gives him zero marks for that. Smiling brightly, Jae Young concludes that Song Wu got 24 points out of 50, and he will continue to bother him tomorrow. Song Wu has already expected that kind of result and started walking away without saying anything. Jae Young starts following him again and says that he now knows how to operate him. Song Wu calmly asks if he is some kind of appliance, to which Jae Young replies that he is very similar. Jae Young stops following Song Wu and starts to think about what he has achieved until now by bothering Song Wu. He remembers all the titles he received in his time and realizes how it is true that negative impressions have a stronger impact as he has firmly engraved his presence in San Wu's mind. He is satisfied by his achievements, as the emotional pain he has felt is nullified at this point, and he has fully achieved his emotional revenge. He is not sure if he can be called a sadist at this point, but he enjoys bothering San Wu and seeing his different expressions when previously he thought that his junior is incapable of making such faces. He is contemplating slowly stopping, as at first he just planned to do this for two weeks, but seeing Song Wu's strong reaction, he is worried that the other might go on leave. Jae Young didn't expect Song Wu to be this bothered by his presence, as he was only planning to harass him a little. It's hard to keep doing this, since he asks seniors to put their bags on the seat, and he can't understand anything in calculus. Don't worry, our Prince Charming. We don't understand anything in calculus, too. He couldn't stop shaking his leg in the library because he was very bored and he also had a hard time eating the tasteless food San Wu seemed to like. He couldn't even drink a sip of black holic coffee he bought from the store and he left it in the club room, but no one even looked at it. 
Jae Young greets the girls coming from the opposite, while still thinking about how he can't continue this for two weeks. He suddenly remembers how Song Woo is good with polite girls and looks good walking beside Ji Hae. Earlier, when Song Woo noticed him, he thought he would just walk by, but he looked surprised to spot him. When they first get acquainted with each other, Song Woo doesn't even recognize him, and then he starts to run away from him, like he's a serial killer. When he looked at Song Woo running away from him, he kept thinking about how he was very tough, but he liked how he managed to leave his imprint on Song Woo. He doesn't even know why he is chasing the other, but it makes him realize that if this is going to continue like this, he doesn't want to be useless to Song Woo. His reaction is a great example of how a person's greed never ends, as now he wants to become an amazing and reliable senior to Song Woo. Jae Young is looking through Ji Hae's social media and stumbles upon a post with a cryptic message about someone who looks scary, but it's not a bad person in reality. Don't misunderstand our Jae Young, he is not a stalker. He accidentally opened her account. He looks at the timestamp and finds that she posted this story on the day she visited his workplace with Song Woo, which surely means that she is talking about him in the post. This reminds him of when Song Woo yelled at him for stalking Ji Hae, and he realized how Song Woo considered her a good person. Jae Young is not happy with the fact that Ji Hae is like a fairy to Song Woo, while he is a devil dressed in red. Even though it looks like Song Woo is still not interested in her, as he doesn't know the full information about her, Jae Young is planning to leave him alone if he is getting along with her well. Thinking to himself, Jae Young concludes that if he lets Song Woo go, he might start dating Ji Hae in three months. His imagination takes him eight years into the future, when Song Woo will get married to Ji Hae. It makes him wonder what Song Woo would think about him at the time, and the only possible answer he can think of is that Song Woo will only remember him as a person who couldn't graduate because of him and bullied him for that. In his imagination, Song Woo says to Ji Hae that he only endured that bullying because she was beside him, and he doesn't even remember Jae Young's face, except for the fact that he wore red clothes everywhere. Jae Young is the perfect example of how we make our lives difficult by overthinking. Jae Young is horrified by his thoughts and doesn't want them to turn into reality. He leans back on the sofa, thinking about how he can't become a senior like Song Woo, but it is a good thing that his junior at least knows his name. Determined to change the situation, he first decides to get rid of the image of a bully who dresses in red and looks for something different in his closet. Jae Young is confused by his own feelings, as he doesn't understand why he is doing something so tiring. Meanwhile, San Wu is sitting in the class and is annoying with the fact that Jae Young is still not there when the teacher already arrives and he is even a teaching assistant. He is looking at the entrance when Jae Young suddenly appears beside him and asks why he is looking back when he is standing right there. I think we all need a moment to digest Jae Young's looks. San Wu is shocked by the changed appearance of his senior, but he doesn't let his surprise show and just turns toward the teacher. Even though he is confused by why Jae Young is not wearing red, he decides to ignore him and place a divider between them, determined to stick to his plan. Soon, the teacher starts her lecture and informs them that there will be a skit presentation on Thursday and permits them to prepare for it over the next hour. Sang Wu is not surprised by the assignment, as he already saw it in the syllabus. He recalls that it is a short play with two people speaking Chinese for three minutes, and he needs to get good grades in it, since the assignment is worth 20% of their final grade. The teacher shows them the list of paragraphs for the assignment, and says that the group that needs to present early is at a disadvantage, but she will consider this while evaluating the assignment. Sang Wu is shocked when he finds that he is paired with Jae Young, and they are the first group that needs to present. He quickly raises his hand, and when the teacher turns toward him, he asks if the group partner can be changed in case you can't work with that person. To his disappointment, the teacher replies that it is not possible, and adds that there are students who work well, while others are not that good, and overcoming that divide shows teamwork. She adds that the teaching assistant chose the pairs at random to deal with such a situation, so he doesn't need to worry about that. As expected, the pairing was also pre-planned. The teacher turns toward the class, while Song Wu dejectedly slumps down on his seat, thinking about how this unreasonable pairing is because of Jae Young. The senior is enjoying his condition and playfully assures him that there is nothing to worry about as he will handle the assignment. Song Wu still doesn't say anything, just thinking about the unfortunate situation he is forced into. The teacher then tells them to refer to the hundred sentences on the handout that she just passed around and asks them to start working with their partners. Song Wu is still deep in thought, as he is sure that Jae Young did this to interfere with his grades, but he is relieved that the assignment will be marked on individual performance so he can fill the roles of two characters in the worst-case scenario. He finally comes out of his thoughts when Jae Young leans closer to him to take a look at the handout. 
Stan Wu says to him that there are a lot of lines about asking and answering questions about different locations in the handout, so they should do a skit about guiding a Chinese exchange student. He adds that he will play the role of Korean guide, while Jae Young can be the exchange student. Jae Young quickly dismisses his idea, saying that it is boring, and comments that it is a good thing they didn't work on that game together. San Wu is extremely annoyed by Jae Young, and tells him to suggest something if he doesn't like that. I am taking notes and will use all of Song Wu's comebacks when someone bothers me next time. Jae Young doesn't seem bothered by the challenge, as he takes a look at the dialogues and then suggests that they should make a skit about the Qing Dynasty housekeeper being voice fished. Ignoring Song Wu's confused expression, he continues that the beginning of the skit will be about selling items at the market. He shows how they will use the lines in that situation, repeating the lines about selling and buying new goods. He adds that the thing about con man is that they will shift the scene to a phone call where a person demands ransom for a child. Jay Young says that the other person on the call will reply that he is not married and will call the kidnapper a con man. Stan Wu is silently listening to his explanation and is surprised that it is better than he had expected. He calmly asks why they are setting it up in the Qing dynasty, to which Jay Young replies that the professor is a fanatic about the Qing dynasty. He adds that they might get full scores if they showed up in that kind of clothing. Sang Wu is still confused, so Jae Young points at the paper, showing him how the skit includes the evaluation of direction, wittiness, and preparation. Sang Wu's confusion about the grade is finally clear, while Jae Young keeps talking, telling him how he knows the professor well because she is also their club's professor. Sang Wu asks him what the club is and is shocked when Jae Young replies that it is the theater club. He recalls how his usual path was blocked because of the theater club, which only means that Jae Young was behind that too. Jae Young would be a billionaire if he put this much effort into some business. Sang Wu doesn't say anything and just continues to aggressively write in his notebook. Jae Young leans over his shoulder to take a peek at his writing and comments on how it is interesting because he finally discovered something that they have in common. Sang Wu is sure that they can't have anything in common and his sullen expression shows what he is feeling. Jae Young says that he is talking about their handwriting, but Sang Wu doesn't comment on that and just requests that Jae Young stop distracting him. Despite not paying any attention to Jae Young, Sang Wu can't stop thinking about what he said and is sure that his handwriting is not as messy as his seniors. Jae Young keeps talking to him, saying how he is very carefree, and it seems that he doesn't hold grudges even though he is working with a bully and a sadist. Sang Wu keeps ignoring him, but Jae Young doesn't back down and asks him what he thinks about revenge. He continues that Sang Wu most probably wants to take revenge in some way, since he is like an annoying fly, and it would be nice if he left him alone. When he still doesn't get an answer, Jae Young asks if it feels good to ignore He Young's words. Sang Wu replies that he is doing this right now and asks Jae Young to stay quiet, while thinking to himself how he doesn't remember having such a bad person as is He Young. Jae Young replies that he will be quiet if Sang Wu listens to his request. Sang Wu instantly says no to him. But Jae Young is unfazed and asks him to take off his hat. His words only annoy Sang Wu more, who completely ignores him and goes back to writing in his notebook. Jae Young waits for a couple of minutes and then snatches the notebook from Sang Wu's hand. He writes something on it and quickly returns the notebook, saying that Sang Wu did well, so there is nothing much that needs to be fixed. Sang Wu takes the notebook and is surprised to see that Jae Young has filled all the blank places that he has left because he doesn't know the answers. Prince Charming is determined to prove that he is worthy of his title. He is so quick to help his junior. He finally turns toward his senior and asks him why he is like this. When Jae Young asks him what he means, Sang Wu explains that at first Jae Young harassed him to no end, but now it feels like he has moved on from his negative emotions. Jae Young doesn't get a chance to reply as the teacher comes to their table and asks if they are doing well. Looking at the pair, she says to Sang Wu that he will have no problem with the assignment when Jae Young is his partner. Jae Young quickly says to the teacher that Sang Wu did all the work. The teacher seems surprised to hear this and asks to take a look at the notebook. Sang Wu quickly hands her the notebook while thinking to himself about Jae Young's diverse personality. He can't believe how Jae Young changed his appearance, and his attitude also changed because he used to curse at him at first. He's surprised at how Jae Young went from harassing him at first to helping him with the assignment, and he can't help but think that he is the weirdest person he has met. He comes out his thoughts when the teacher comments on how it is good that they chose the Qing Dynasty, and that the story they wrote is also good. All the positive thoughts vanish from Song Wu's mind when the teacher says that the dialogue they wrote is quite vulgar. Like Song Wu, we were also very quick to think that Jae Young was just doing it out of the kindness of his heart. The teacher adds that Jae Young must be the one to write these and asks them to fix them.
because they will get zero marks if they present them. When the teacher leaves, Jae Young turns towards Song Wu with a big smile and says that he holds grudges. I love our Prince Charming, but he is slightly annoying at this point. During her next class, Song Wu places a divider between them, as he couldn't do it in the last class, because they were preparing for the assignment, but he can do it now since they just have to listen to the lecture. He glares at the divider, thinking about what Jae Young will do next to bother him. His main guess is that Jae Young will knock over the divider, pretending it was a mistake. He might keep rattling the desk and making weird noises just to distract him. Song Wu is surprised when nothing happens, and Jae Young is completely silent. Curious about the weird situation, he removes the divider and is shocked to see Jae Young peacefully sleeping. He couldn't drag his eyes away from the handsome face of his senior, but he quickly put them back. He can't bring himself to deny the fact that Jae Young is very handsome, but he is more focused on the fact that his senior is a bully. Song Wu decides to take this chance to focus on the class, but to his annoyance, his mind keeps drifting toward Jae Young. He is annoyed at his inability to focus in class, and keeps thinking about how Jae Young has amazing power to still disturb him even when he is asleep. Looking at his senior's sleepy face, Song Wu recalls how Jae Young had drawn on his face a few days ago. According to him, Jae Young is delusional if he thinks Song Wu can't hold grudges, because he can take revenge when he gets a chance. Our Song Wu is a little devil. Right now, he has the perfect opportunity for it, and he slowly raises his pen. Determined to get back at Jae Young by doing the same thing he did to him, his hand starts to tremble as he thinks about what he should draw on the other face since he hasn't drawn anything in a long time. He settles on at least drawing a mole, but is having a hard time figuring out where he should draw that. Encouraging himself by thinking that he can draw anywhere, San Wu puts the pen on Jae Young's forehead, but is startled when the other suddenly opens his eyes. He quickly snatches his hand back, accidentally drawing a line on Jae Young's face, and puts back the divider on the desk. San Wu is surprised that he actually drew something on Jae Young's face, but he is not happy with the fact that he has dropped to a bully's level. The class ends sooner than Song Wu expected, and he quickly stands up to leave the room. He stops in his tracks when Jae Young calls his name, asking if he got his revenge. Jae Young looks at his reflection on his phone and comments on how his mark looks like a robot vacuum cleaner baked in bread. He doesn't seem bothered by the mark on his face, as he offers to treat Song Wu to lunch. Without waiting for the reply, he grabs Song Wu's hand and starts dragging him. Soon they reach the restaurant, and as they are looking at the menu, Jae Young asks Song Wu if he doesn't like pizza. He is surprised when Song Wu calmly says no to him. Jae Young asks for the reason for his politeness, but Song Wu doesn't reply to that, and instead asks him to wash the mark from his face. He recalls how earlier, when they bumped into another student, Jae Young proudly told her how Song Wu made this cool drawing on his face. Jae Young casually refuses to wash his face and then changes the topic. He says that he didn't order pasta because Song Wu dislikes it. Silence falls on the table, and Song Wu thinks to himself that he just said that about pasta because Jae Young works at an Italian restaurant. He doesn't believe in fussing over the taste of food, as long as it is nutritious. He is surprised that Jae Young is wasting money on such expensive food, instead of just eating at the cafeteria, seeing Song Wu eating his food silently. Jae Young is surprised by how he even eats his food robotically. After lunch, they are walking back together when Jae Young asks Song Wu to look at the sky saying how the weather is very nice. Song Wu is, as usual, lost in his thoughts, silently cursing Jae Young. His annoyance with his senior grows when he takes out a can of black coffee from his pocket. He is sure that Jae Young will mock him by drinking the coffee in front of him, but he is not worried as he already has a can of coffee in his bag to deal with such a situation. His smug expressions are so cute. His mind is completely blown away when, instead of mocking him, Jae Young offers him the coffee. Suspicious of what the senior might do, he carefully looks instead at the can and shakes violently. Annoyed, Jae Young asks him to just drink it, but Song Wu is sure that he must have done something with the coffee. Jae Young tells him that he bought 16 cans of this coffee, but it tasted awful, so he is now dumping it in Song Wu's mouth. He continues that he will give the rest of the cans to him, and he should at least take his hat off now. Song Wu just casually sips on the coffee and replies that it is not Jae Young's business to care about what he wears. He is not bothered by Jae Young and is feeling very peaceful after drinking his favorite coffee and walking on his usual path. Breaking the silence, Jae Young asks him if he is not scared because they are alone and he might do something to him. Song Wu asks him if he is a gangster, but instead of replying to him, Jae Young points out how he uses foul language. Ignoring his comment, Song Wu says that if Jae Young was in a fistfight, he wouldn't be able to hold his ground. I feel Jae Young's pain. These sharp remarks have killing tendencies. 
Jae Young replies that Sang Woo must work out a lot, and they should play a game of basketball when they meet again. Sang Woo starts to walk faster, saying that he doesn't want to play the game, and requests that Jae Young stop referring to himself as He Young. When they reach the library, Jae Young is the first one to sit at a table and snatches Sang Woo's notebook. As soon as he places it on the table, Sang Woo protests against the theft, but grows silent when Jae Young offers him some money to not protest. He is irritated by the situation, but he is happy that he already expected it and prepared earplugs. Even though they feel stuffy, he is satisfied with how they block the noise. Sang Woo's mission to concentrate on his studies fails, as Jae Young continues to grab his attention by staring at him continuously. He places a divider between them, but also does nothing when Jae Young stands up and continues to stare at him while writing something in the notebook. Finally giving up, Sang Woo stands up, planning to go home and study there. Before he can leave, Jae Young gives him a page saying that it is his present. Sang Woo takes a look at the page and finds a badly drawn portrait of himself with a very angry facial expression. Without wasting any time, he tears the page into pieces, ignoring Jae Young's comment that he is being too cruel. The art is amazing, but it would take great courage to save a sketch like that. Sang Woo leaves the library quickly after that and unlocks his bicycle in the parking lot, thinking about how he just wasted his time. Just then, Jae Young calls his name and wishes him good night, even though it is very early to say this. Sang Woo replies that he hopes Jae Young has a nightmare and paddles away quickly. He is confused about why Jae Young wishes him good night in broad daylight, even though he would have felt the same if Jae Young said this at night. Despite all this, he is hoping that he will be able to restore his routine quickly. The next day, Sang Woo has a surprisingly quiet day, as Jae Young falls asleep in a class behind the divider. After the class, Jae Young asks him for lunch, but when Sang Woo refuses, he listens to him and leaves him alone. After having a peaceful lunch, Sang Woo walks out of the cafeteria, thinking about how this piece feels unusual. It doesn't last long as a can of black holic appears in front of his eyes. Grumbling, he takes the coffee as Jae Young asks him if he wants to do well on the skit. After Sang Woo states the obvious answer, Jae Young replies that they have to go somewhere in this case. Sang Woo asks about the place they need to go and is confused when Jae Young says that they are going to find their costumes. Seeing his confusion, Jae Young asks him if he is going to wear a shirt with English writing on it when he is doing a skit about the Qing Dynasty merchants. Sang Woo complains that it is time for his walk, but his statement irritates Jae Young, who starts dragging him by his hand, saying that he can do that stuff later. Sang Woo shouts that it is assault and he is going to report Jae Young, but when the other keeps ignoring him, he grumbles that he will make Jae Young accept his crimes today. Jae Young finally responds as he starts pouting and asks why Song Woo is being mean to someone who is just trying to help him out. It is a wonder how Song Woo is not melting at the sight of that pout. He adds that Song Woo can report him if he still has the same opinion after they reach their destination. They soon reach the theater club and rummage through the closet to find the costumes for their skits. Jae Young asks Song Woo if he is going to be a merchant in the skit. Song Woo gives him a positive reply while thinking about how the merchant has the most dialogue and has a better chance of getting a good grade in that role. Jae Young continues that in this case, he is going to be the customer and the person who gets voice fished. He takes out two costumes and shows them to Song Wu, asking for his opinion on which one is better. Song Wu replies that they both look the same, forcing Jae Young to point out that the hemming is different in both outfits. He is still unfazed as he tells Jae Young to just pick one, and says that it is weird to be this obsessive over an outfit for the skit. Jae Young calmly replies that he has to do this to get good marks and then finalize the blue dress for himself. He then crouches down beside Song Woo and asks him to look for a pigtail. Uncomfortable with their close proximity, Song Woo tells him to back off a little bit. Jae Young agrees to back away, but instead of doing that, he suddenly removes the hat from Song Woo's head. He is already handsome, but the way he looks without a hat should be illegal. For a moment, he just stares at the changed look of Song Woo, oblivious to his reaction. Song Wu is thinking about how the senior has been talking about his hat since yesterday, and it makes him wonder if he wants to take the hat. He says to Jae Young that you should buy a new one since this one is old, and he has been wearing it since high school. Jae Young keeps staring at him without blinking as Song Wu continues to rummage through the clothes and says that he will buy a new hat for his senior if he stops bothering him from now on. Instead of saying anything in reply to Song Wu, Jae Young slowly raises his hand to touch the side of his face saying that he has something smudged there. Song Wu squats his hand away quickly and asks Jae Young to return his hat. He didn't get a chance to grab his hat, as Jae Young quickly moved it out of his reach, 
asking him why he always hides his face when he looks much better without a hat. Sang Wu sharply replies that it is his choice and asks for his hat again, but Jae Young refuses to give it to him, saying that he wants to look at his face. Sang Wu is extremely irritated at this point and shoves Jae Young on his back, quickly snatching the hat from his hand and running away from there, while Jae Young just sits between the pile of clothes. Sang Wu runs out of the theater with his face red with anger, or is he blushing as he wonders why Jae Young always snatches other people's things like that? Sang Wu puts his hat back on and recalls how he pushed Jae Young onto the ground and yelled at him to take his hat back. He realizes that his reaction was too extreme, even if he had a good reason for it. He is confused by his own behavior, as he figures that he was surprised because Jae Young got too close to him and started touching his face. But it shouldn't matter as his senior is not a girl. Our little devil, you're in for a surprise. He is still standing at the stairs, thinking about the whole ordeal, when Jae Young comes there and gives him the things he had left behind. Taking the chance, Jae Young explains that he was just being playful and took Sang Wu's hat off so he could put a wig on him, but he didn't know it would make him mad. Sang Wu quickly replies that he is not mad, while thinking about how he misunderstood the situation for no reason. Jae Young continues the conversation, saying that they should practice more to do well on the skit and get along with each other. His words do not affect Sang Wu, who turns around to say that it seems like Jae Young changed his strategy, but he is not phased by stuff like this so he doesn't have to act friendly. Jae Yum replies that it is not a strategy and he is just doing what he wants. Ignoring his statement, Sang Wu asks him not to follow him around, telling him how he can't go to the library because of him. Jae Yum's smile has returned at this point as he cheerfully says that he wants to do it more when Sang Wu asks him not to do it. Trying the reverse strategy, Sang Wu asks him to follow him, but to his annoyance, Jae Yum cheerfully says that he will listen to him since he asked so nicely. Sang Wu ignores him and goes to his bicycle, hoping that the others will not be able to follow him now. His eyes bulge out due to shock when he spots Jae Young rolling beside him on a skateboard. Bewildered, Sang Wu asks him what he is doing, and Jae Young calmly reminds him that he asked Jae Young to follow him. Jae Young decides to take his opportunity to show his skills and does a backside flip, mesmerizing the kids standing by the roadside. We are watching it through the screen, but I am sure our expressions are the same as those kids. He high-fives all three of the kids and rolls past them as they clap for him. Sang Wu is not impressed by his techniques and is trying his best to paddle faster, while still confused about why Jae Young is following him. He finally stops in front of a building, and when Jae Young comments on how he lives there, Sang Wu informs him that the maximum sentence for home invasion is three years. Jae Young is not threatened by his comment, as he is already wondering why Sang Wu didn't threaten him earlier. Sang Wu parks his bicycle there and warns Jae Young not to steal it or he will report him. Jae Young is speechless for a moment, but then he wishes Song Wu a good weekend, and they part ways. While climbing the stairs to his apartment, Song Wu is thinking about why it feels strange and then realizes that this is the first time they have peacefully parted ways. After entering his apartment, he hangs the coat in the closet and then looks out the window. He is surprised to find Jae Young playing with a cat. He recalls how Jae Young was angry for two days, on rest for one day, and a little annoying for the last two days. To him, Jae Young is like an irregular sequence, and he hates things without patterns because they can be unpredictable. On Saturday, Song Wu is at his part-time job and jolts from his chair when he spots someone entering a cafe. He is sure that the person is Jae Young, and she came to annoy him as he expected. Slightly disappointed, he sits back in his seat when the person turns out to be someone else. He recalls how, for the past few days, there hasn't been a day where he didn't meet Jae Young. Even when they don't have classes, the other chases him around. Has it become a habit or hidden love? After leaving work, Sang Wu walks back home, thinking about how he kept glancing at the door his whole shift. He is wondering if Jae Young will be waiting for him in front of his house, since he has already been there once and knows the place. Just then, he spots the shadow of someone around the corner, and is satisfied that his suspicions have come true. When he turns around the corner, he is disappointed to see that it is just a trash can. Sang Wu realizes that he was unintentionally waiting for Jae Young to show up, and if he had been aware of this earlier, he would have spent his time more productively during the work. Doing some calculations in his mind, he figures that Jae Young has the most chance to show up on weekdays, but is the opposite on weekends. The next day, Song Wu is at work when Jae Young finally shows up there and simply nods and replies to his greetings. Song Wu is not happy with his presence, as he is hoping that Jae Young has stopped chasing him. This time, he is not scared by his senior's presence and is planning to report him to his boss if he tries to cause him trouble. His torment soon begins as Jae Young starts to order several things on his table, 
Sang-woo serves without passing any comments, realizing that today he will be an errand boy. Where can we find such a handsome errand boy for ourselves? When he goes to Jae Young's table the third time to serve oyster chips, he is irritated when Jae Young keeps sighing, complaining about having a bad day. He finally loses his patience and tells Jae Young to share his problem, commenting on how his sighs are very annoying. Taking another sigh, Jae Young tells him that his laptop is broken and just beeps but doesn't turn on. Sang Woo replies that the memory card is probably not in its slot or that there is an issue with the motherboard. Jae Young looks irritated as he says that he is completely clueless when it comes to computers and asks if he should take his laptop to a tech center. Sang Woo just listens to him as Jae Young continues that he brought his laptop with him, but he can't do anything to fix it. He adds that he will play a few more games and then go to a tech center, but he is not sure if any place will be open this late. Annoyed by his complaining, Sang Woo asks him to hand over the laptop, and Jae Young perks up at his offer, finally remembering that his junior is a computer science major who must be good with computers. Sang Woo just says that he will try to take the laptop from him. He takes it back to his table, and after taking a look, he figures that there is an issue with the memory. He opens the laptop's casing and is shocked to see that there is no RAM in it. Using the cafe's system, he messages Jae Young about it, who tells him to check his bag. Sang Woo follows his instructions and finds the RAM card in the bag. He texts Jae Young again, asking him why he took it, and gets a reply that it must have fallen out when he was running. Sang Woo doesn't believe his words but continues to work on a laptop, finally managing to turn it on after five minutes. He is irritated once again when he finds the desktop filled with all sorts of apps. Sang Woo texts Jae Young again, asking him to clean his desktop and uninstall the programs he no longer needs since his laptop is taking too long to boot. Jae Young just asks if the laptop is broken, to which Sang Woo replies that it needs formatting. He gets permission to do what he thinks is necessary, and Jae Young informs him that there might be an operating system CD in his bag. Sang Woo further asks him about some external storage, and is surprised when he finds an external HDD in this bag. He is surprised at how the others carry so many things around, even when he doesn't even know what backup means. Sang Woo again asks him if he should start formatting and partitioning the disk too. Jae Young replies that he should split the C and D drives with the window directory on the D. It is no surprise that Jae Young purposely planned all this. Quickly realizing his mistake, Jae Young messages him again, saying that he doesn't know anything, but just hears that it is better this way. After finalizing everything, Sang Woo focuses on his work and only raises his head when he hears Jae Young say that his eyes are sparkling. Jae Young thinks to himself how it is true that working men are more attractive, but he doesn't dare say it out loud. Steam that Sang Woo is already finished, Jae Young comments on how he is awesome. Sang Woo hands over the laptop and advises him to not use it for graphic design, as it is way below the standard for that. Jae Young thanks him with a bright smile in return. Later, they are walking silently on the street, and when Jae Young keeps ignoring him, Sang Woo breaks the silence and asks him what he is doing. Acting surprised, Jae Young asks him if he has been walking beside him all this time. His acting classes are paying off. Sang Woo again asks him where he is going, to which Jae Young replies that he is going home. When Sang Woo points out that this is the way to his house, Jae Young informs him that he lives nearby. Sang Woo is relieved to hear that he is not being stalked, and they continue to walk silently again. After a moment, Jae Young says Sang Woo is a computer genius, and he wants to somehow repay him. Sang Woo quickly replies that he just did it so Jae Young would stop moping. In reality, he is not sure what the other will do in the name of repaying him. His opinion is quickly dismissed as Jae Young says that he still wants to repay in some way and asks if he wants to watch a movie. Considering watching a movie together as a date activity, Sang Woo quickly says that he won't want to watch a movie with Jae Young. He is surprised when Jae Young says that he is not talking about walking to a movie together and will just give him a movie ticket. Sang Woo is surprised by his strange thoughts and walks toward his building, saying he will take the ticket. Jae Young wishes him a good night as Song Woo silently walks inside the apartment building with his head hanging low. The next day in class, they practice the Chinese language and Jae Young is not happy with Song Woo's accent. Song Woo ignores his comments and instead asks him in Chinese if they should go to a movie together. Looking surprised, Jae Young cheerfully replies with what movie Song Woo wants to watch. Song Woo quickly catches his slip up and reminds him that it is not his line. Jae Young is happy that Sang Woo actually caught it and comments on how he knew that Sang Woo would do well since he is studious. He continues that his accent is still not perfect for intermediate Mandarin. Sang Woo replies that he is repeating exactly what is written in the book. 
Jae Young says that there is no point in learning a language if you can't use it to communicate. He adds that every country's pronunciation style matches its language, but San Wu is not trying to imitate it completely. San Wu is surprised by how this senior became this intelligent. Oblivious to his thoughts, Jae Young continues that San Wu is good when it comes to the first tone, but he needs to drag it out a bit more. If we got a teacher like Jae Young, we all would have mastered our Korean by now. Song Wu follows his instructions and gets praised by Jae Young, who further tells him that the second tone rises after that. When Song Wu imitates him perfectly, Jae Young pats his head, saying how he is a quick learner. He continues to stroke Song Wu's head and says that they should try the third tone now. Song Wu is stunned by getting his head stroked like that, and when he tries to speak again, it doesn't come out perfectly. Jae Young is surprised by how his accent is bad again and asks him to repeat the second tone. When Song Wu can't say it well, Jae Young seems disappointed and asks if he is glitching, since he was doing well before. Song Wu is slowly growing angry, as Jae Young says that their skit will never get a good score if his pronunciation stays the same. Changing the topic, Jae Young slid the paper toward him, telling him to take a look as he revised the script. Song Wu carefully scanned the paper, surprised that he actually removed all the swear words. Jae Young asks him if he is proud of him, but Song Wu ignores him and instead calls the professor requesting that she take a look at the revised script. The teacher takes the script from his hand and chuckles while looking at it. Jae Young asks her opinion on the script, and she tells him that it is much better than their first draft, which was very bad. But she could now sense a masterpiece in the making. Jae Young replies that it is all because of Song Wu, but the teacher doesn't believe that Song Wu can know this much vulgar language. Love how the professor knows her students very well. Jae Young protests, saying that he is her favorite, but she just leaves, saying that she is looking forward to their script. Song Wu just listens to the conversation, thinking about how Jae Young was like an annoying error, but he has become nicer now. They are walking together after class when Jae Young tells him that they can't have lunch together, as he already has plans. Song Wu claps happily at that, as Jae Young hands him the coffee while advising him to eat and drink well and not follow the strangers. Song Wu comments that he always wonders if Jae Young is actually insane. The senior just walks away after bidding him goodbye, while Song Wu just stands there, recalling the events of that day. He agrees with Jae Young that he might be glitching, but he is annoyed at how the other has kept touching him, and he is planning to teach him a lesson if he does that again. While deep in thought, he keeps walking and spots Jae Young laughing hysterically with some of his friends. As Song Wu reaches his next class, he tries his best to make himself believe that he is feeling good. He opens his book, but he can't focus at all on the words written on the paper. He is confused by his own behavior, as he never dislikes studying like this, and it is probably happening because he hasn't been able to concentrate in class. The next day, he has left a chair for Jae Young and is thinking about how he is late. Just then, Jae Young comes there, staggering and flops down on the chair. San Wu notices how he reeks of alcohol and asks him why he is late. Jae Young instead asks him why he thinks, to which San Wu asks him if he was drinking last night. Jae Young just confirms his guess but he quickly sits up when Sung Woo asks him who he is drinking with. With a mischievous smile, Jae Young asks what matters, to which Sung Woo calmly replies that he just wants to know who is foolish enough to drink with him. Jae Young says that if he wants to drink with him, he just has to tell him that. Sung Woo flinches at his words and asks in a cold voice if he looks crazy. Sung Woo diverts his attention back to the lecture, but he can't understand anything as Jae Young keeps complaining about his hangover. When the class is over, Song Wu notices that Jae Young is still sleeping and informs him that the class has ended. Grumbling, Jae Young raises his hand and clutches his arm, but then rushes out of the classroom, saying that he is going to throw up. Song Wu goes to the cafeteria after that, but he keeps thinking about Jae Young, who is still puking since he didn't come back. After finishing his lunch, he goes to the convenience store where the sales girl recognizes him and assures him that his coffee will be restored on Monday. Song Wu starts looking around to find something as she tells him how she felt bad for not having any coffee, when he visited the last time since it is the only one he drinks. Song Wu takes a hangover medicine and shows it to the sales girl, who says that he can take it for free. He walks back towards the school, hoping that this medicine will help Jae Young's hangover. He is aware that Jae Young might have already taken some medicine, or this might not be as effective as advertised. He doesn't have any idea about Jae Young's location, and is planning to just leave the medicine in the drama club. Song Wu carefully looks around the premises of the school and finds Jae Young sitting on a bench, laughing with a girl. He turns around without delivering the medicine, disappointed that he just wasted his time. He might look tough, but in reality, he's a softie who is easily affected by negative things. 
He is sitting in his next class when he receives a text message from Jay Young, telling him not to be too upset, as he's going back home already. Sun Wu rumbles about why he will be disappointed and tries to write something in reply, but can't decide what he should say. After erasing several texts, he settles on just replying with a simple okay. On Wednesday, Sun Wu is studying alone in the class when Ji Hei approaches him and comments on how he is already studying hard even though there is still time before their exams. Sun Wu calmly says that he likes to get ahead, to which Ji Hei replies that she wants to do it too but never succeeds. After a moment of silence, Ji Hei notices his bad mood and says that he looks very down. Without giving him a chance to reply, she starts showing him some pictures of cute animals to cheer him up. San Wu silently looks at the pictures of cats and dogs, but when a picture of a keyboard comes up, he instantly speaks, asking Ji Hei what it is. She replies that it is just a screenshot she took while scrolling and accidentally saved in the wrong folder. San Wu explains that the keyboard is the honeybee edition of Phil Calm, and it is a great choice since it is reliable. He then asks her if she has decided on what key switch she is going to order. Shihei is surprised by his in-depth knowledge of this matter and asks what is good for typing. San Wu seems to be in a slightly better mood as he replies that red mechanical switches are quieter, but she wants to feel that click spring. She should go for browns. Slightly confused, Jihei replies that she will go for red, and San Wu further tells her that she can find an older model at a very cheap price instead of buying this new model. She looks clueless about where she can buy these secondhand, and Song Wu starts to explain it to her instantly. After he is done, she passes him a note that has a thank you message for him and says that she will always be happy to help him whenever he needs it. Song Wu is thinking over the offer, not sure if he can discuss something like this with Ji Hei, but then remembers that she has a better grasp on cultural studies than him. Hesitating a little, he asks her if she knows the visual arts guy named Jae Young and if he is dating someone or not. Jihei replies that, as far as she knows, Jae Young is single and broke up with the girl he was dating last year. She tells him that the girl went to law school and was the prime example of beauty with brains. San Wu inquires how she knows all of that, to which Jihei replies that she looked her up online and sometimes hears about her. On San Wu's further inquiry, she tells him that the girl is very popular among people and she even heard of her getting an offer from a big talent company. She says that the girl already worked with a famous brand and right now she's a top singer. Jihei quickly clarifies that she's not interested in Jae Young. It's just that her friend keeps telling her about him. Song Wu asks Jihei why her friend likes Jae Young so much, to which she replies that it is because he is very hot. He silently agrees with her statement and remembers Jae Young's skateboarding skills when she says he is also a good athlete. It looks like someone is crushing on the handsome senior. The only thing he doesn't agree with is that Jae Young is very chill. Jihei says that he used to get so angry whenever she mentioned his senior, but all of a sudden he is very curious about him. Sang Wu doesn't say anything in reply, and instead just says that the professor is already here. They are walking together after class when Jihei asks him if he is going to have lunch at the cafeteria. Sang Wu suddenly remembers that he was supposed to treat Jihei to lunch and offers her a meal ticket. Confused, Jihei asks why he is giving it to her. Sang Wu replies that he was supposed to treat her to lunch, but Jihei is not happy with his offer and says that he should at least eat with her. San Wu insists that she take the ticket, but Jihei refuses, saying that he can just invite her later when he is free. He finally agrees with her and says that he will get her pizza next time. Jihei replies that she is just hoping he didn't mean a pizza toast, but he doesn't reply to that, just thinking about how she is not easy to fool. He stops in his tracks when he hears his name being called and looks back to find Jae Young walking toward him, saying that he was looking for him everywhere. Song Wu is confused by why Jae Young is searching for him, and his confusion only grows when Jae Young says that they have lunch plans together. Song Wu turns around without saying anything while Jae Young finally greets Ji Hei. He says that they haven't been introduced properly. Ji Hei introduces herself to him and says that she already knows his name. They both start walking behind Song Wu, still talking among themselves, as Jae Young says that he didn't know she hung out with Song Wu, but he remembers them coming to the restaurant together. Jihei replies that he might find it hard to believe, but it was the first time they met, and Song Wu was a real gentleman, as he helped carry all of her stuff. Their chatter continues while standing in the line in the cafeteria, while Song Wu is just annoyed by how long the line is. Once they are at their table, Jae Young asks Jihei if she is dating someone. When she replies that she is single, Jae Young seems surprised and says that someone like her can't be single. Jihei is happy at the compliments and playfully adds that guys don't get what a privilege it is to date her. Jae Young asks if she needs his help since he knows a few guys, 
and asks her what her type is. Jihei replies that he is grateful for his offer, but right now she just wants to focus on her studies. Jae Young still doesn't give up as he asks her opinion of Song Woo, saying how they look good together. Song Woo starts coughing at his statement, slightly offending Jihei, who asks if the idea of dating her is that bad. Song Woo calmly replies that she would also feel awkward if someone tried to pair her up with someone she couldn't even imagine dating. Che Young is more focused on the nickname. Jihei calls it Song Woo and finds out that it is Song Woo's childhood nickname. Song Woo is the only one feeling very uncomfortable and just wants to leave as quickly as possible. Che Young is not happy about the nickname and says that she must be very close with his Song Woo to call them by his nickname like that. His possessive side is already showing. Even though he is not even aware of his own feelings yet, Song Woo notices the way Jae Young calls him, but no one is paying attention to him as Jae Young asks Ji Hae if she is going somewhere because she is wearing more makeup than the last time. She looks nervous as she replies that at that time, she just wanted to be comfortable while moving her stuff and didn't pay attention to how she looked. Jae Young says that he was talking about last Wednesday, to which Ji Hae quickly says that she was running late that day, even though she is not sure if they really met that day. Jae Young acts nonchalant as he says that since she paid special attention to her appearance, he thought she wanted to impress someone. Ji Hae realizes that Jae Young hates her, but she doesn't show anything and just chuckles at his statement. Once they leave the cafeteria, Jae Young throws an arm around Song Woo's shoulder and says to Ji Hae that they need to prepare for their presentation tomorrow. Ji Hae bids them goodbye, and Jae Young happily turns towards Song Woo, who swats his hand away. Song Wu then tells Jae Young not to come to the class tomorrow as he will handle all the work. Jae Young replies that he can't do that and then runs away after snatching Song Wu's bag. Shocked, Song Wu quickly follows him, not understanding what Jae Young wants with his bag. While running away, Jae Young recalls his comments on Ji Hae's makeup and can't believe he actually said that. It is all right, our Prince Charming. People do stupid things when they are jealous. He remembers that when he was in high school, Jihei was still in elementary school, and it makes it even more strange that he said something like that to a girl who was six years younger than him. He realizes that he was being immature, but still blames it on Jihei because she was being too friendly with Song Wu. After reaching the football field, he finally landed on the ground, completely worn out by his run. Song Wu also reaches there, breathing heavily, and demands his bag back, asking if Jae Young has finally gone crazy. Jae Young hugs the bag as he replies that he might have gone crazy. When Song Wu tries to pull his bag again, he refuses to let it go, saying that he is using it right now. Defeated, Song Wu flops down beside him and reminds his seniors that they are supposed to prepare for their skit. Jae Young replies that he is going to do it here, but Song Wu is not happy with the suggestion, as he says that there is no furniture there. Jae Young is unfazed as he says that it is not a problem as Song Wu has already memorized the whole script. For a moment of hesitation, Song Wu agrees to practice there. But Jae Young doesn't get up, and instead says that they should rest for 10 minutes. Song Woo says that it is a waste of time, but grows quiet. When Jae Young gives him a can of coffee as a payment, silence fell upon them for a moment and was broken by Jae Young, who suddenly opened his eyes and asked Song Woo what kind of girls he liked. Song Woo is surprised by the personal question, but decides to answer it by telling Jae Young that he likes a calm and well-kept person. Jae Young comments that a kindergarten teacher fits his description, and then asks him about his first love. Song Wu says that it is a very vague question, and Jae Young needs to be more specific for him to answer the question. Seeing his senior's confused expression, Song Wu asks if he wants to know about his first date or the first time he has slept with someone. Finally understanding what he meant, Jae Young asks if he ever had a crush, to which Song Wu replies that his first love was when he was only six years old, but it wasn't a person. He keeps thinking to himself that love is not something real and that it is just another name used instead of libido by confused people. According to him, the propaganda about love is spread by the government in order to sustain the institution of marriage. He is this sure about his opinion because he never felt love for anyone. He finally breaks his silence, as he reminds Jae Young that his rest time is over and starts practicing his dialogue. Jae Young chuckles at that and says something in Chinese, but Song Wu seems to understand, as he says it is not his line. Jae Young is surprised that he understood him, to which Song Wu replies that he said that this feels nice. Jae Young just smiles softly at that, saying how it does feel nice. Their presentation day finally arrives, and as soon as Jae Young spots Song Wu entering the class in his hanbok, he bursts out laughing. His uncontrollable laughter annoys Song Wu, who looks at Jae Young's similar clothes but doesn't say anything about them, 
and instead asks why he is here so early. Jae Young replies that he is a teaching assistant and takes out his mobile as he starts capturing Song Woo's pictures. Still chuckling, he says that this dress suits Song Woo and should wear it every day. Song Woo's irritation increased, but Jae Young just smiled at him and said that they should take a selfie together. Ignoring Song Woo's protests, he clicks several pictures of them and then shows one of them to Song Woo, saying he looks best in that. He finally stops laughing and agrees to rehearse the script once more. They quickly go through their dialogue, and soon it is their turn to present. The act starts with Song Woo acting, as a merchant and loudly advertising his cheap products. Jae Young enters the scene, holding a fan, as he complains that things are still very expensive. Song Woo is momentarily lost in the stare he received from his senior. Thinking about it makes him feel like everything will turn out fine. Song Woo continues his act, saying how he didn't sell anything today, too, and bought a telephone with the rest of his money. They shift their act to the ransom call, and everyone in the class bursts out laughing. When Jae Young says that he is unmarried and the person calling him is a con man, the act ends with Song Wu saying that he is very hungry and that if he dies, they should give his phone to his brother. They both bow politely in front of the class and as everyone claps for them, Jae Young turns toward him, asking for a high five and praising his acting skills. Song Wu can't help but admit that his senior semantic error did the best in the skit, slightly smiling. He returns Jae Young's high five. Once the class ends, the teacher approaches them on their seats and says that is the best skit she has seen in the 10 years of her teaching career. She says to Song Wu that he still needs some pronunciation practice, but it is great how he managed to memorize the whole script in such a short time. He thanks her for the compliment and is shocked when the teacher asks his opinion about becoming a teaching assistant for her class. He glances toward Jae Young, who is just listening to the conversation with a small smile. The professor continues that he doesn't have much work to do and just needs to make handouts and collect students' exam papers and assignments. As a result, he will get some extra credit and also get a chance to have lunch with her. She says that Jae Young was the one who recommended him as a replacement. This reminds Song Wu that there are just two days left until Jae Young drops this course. Even though he has been waiting for this day, he is not happy when it is actually happening. 